Hey everybody, it is our Watch What Happens Live after show with Candy Burris from the Real Housewives of Atlanta and Tamron Hall. You can catch a special edition of Tamron's show, Tamron Hall. Hear us now, airing Friday. Check your local listings. Um, okay, we have more viewer questions for you. Tamron, uh, Peter L. wants to know the most surreal part of interviewing Oprah during her wellness tour, especially after being a fan of hers for so long. Um, well, it took 22 years. I've known her since I was 25, and she would always invite me to her home in Montecito and different events, and then suddenly I'm interviewing her at age 49, and wow. I had, what, 20-plus years to prepare, and I didn't know what to ask. That's the most surreal part. That's... That you have 20 years to prepare for an interview, and then you get there, and you're like, hey, Oprah. Wow. <laughs> And were you the last person to walk through Harpo's door? Yeah, so when Oprah moved Harpo from Chicago, the studio, um, we did a special looking back at the Oprah Winfrey show and the impact of the show. I walked through that door um, and after that, the building was sold. So I don't know if that was a good omen or bad right. omen for me, but yeah, I was reportedly the last person to walk through the O door and wow. then you know she comes on my talk show all those years later so it's kind of crazy that's awesome um candy alexandra b said kenya said she and mark are thinking of having another baby have you spoken to her about this at all and were you were you shocked to hear this considering the last we heard about their relationship um i've talked to kenya multiple times i mean that hasn't been part of the discussion we mainly are talking about what's happening in the world right now. Yeah. I, I know she's been just really sad with all the stuff that's happening, being stuck in the house, you know, really we're coming off of quarantine straight into, you know, yes. protests and stuff. And so I don't know if that's on the forefront of her brain right now. Right. Right. <laughs> um, Candy, uh, Haley V emailed in honor of you saying I'm embedded in your mother effing brain. What moment from that reunion is embedded in yours? That probably because I've had to see that meme go all around the um, social media over and over again. Um, just the simple fact that we did a whole reunion on did it virally. It's like that's embedded in my brain. Like right. I, I think we were going to be able to pull it off. And I mean, obviously we were able to do it um, and we were able to address pretty much everything that we would have addressed had we been face to face. Right. And by the way, shout out to you because you were the only one who did your own hair and makeup. Well, thank you, Andy. I did it again. Wow. Today. I mean, it you looks look great. <laughs> looks really good. Were you annoyed when you saw the other women had hair and makeup people walk in? I mean, I was like, whoa, I was, I was kind of surprised. It wasn't that I was annoyed. I think I, um, I probably fell into a place of insecurity for a quick second because I knew that I didn't get professionally done. So I started second guessing myself, like, should I have called somebody? Should I have broken the rules of quarantine and did this? Like, I didn't know if I, my makeup would, you know, look the same on camera as theirs because theirs was professional. Right. So it wasn't anything of me being angry with them or anything like that. I just, for myself, I just started thinking, well, did I make the wrong decision? Tamron, what was your reaction to Trump reigniting the taking the knee controversy uh, this week? Actually, to be honest with you, I was more focused on the players than that because it, that's the same with, for example, the protests when everyone focuses in on the violence and then they say, the majority though were not violent. It's right. Like, you know, we go, it's like, well, wait a minute. The majority were not violent, but the majority of the coverage is the violence. For right. me, when it comes to Colin Kaepernick and the knee, I would much rather talk about how right he was uh -huh. and how I so desperately would like everyone who didn't support him, who didn't say he was right. As a, my dad was in the military for 30 years and it was a military person who suggested taking the knee to Colin. So let's all just forget about what everyone else is trying to say to reignite it. Let's finish the book.
Because if you finish the book, it can't be reignited. Well, that's what I can't get over. If ever there was a better example of what this thing was all about, it's like, well, what more do you need? What what more information do you need? You know, but he's but the, it, it's look at Drew Brees, someone that is widely admired and loved. He has now apologized. He now understands. Um, he says, but his initial reaction was to go to what he'd been told. I'll be honest with you, Andy, for me, it's not really about making sure everyone believes the same thing. For me, George Floyd represents consequences. If you kill a black man, you suffer the consequences of it. Unlike Philando Castile, who the jury found that officer not guilty. If you take Freddie Gray's life, you have to suffer the con. We're not gonna all agree. Listen, I'm a support of LGBTQ+. I don't expect everyone to be where I am on that topic. But if you are going to carry out a hate crime, this country and the justice system makes you suffer the consequences of that. Had George Floyd taken a white police officer's life, he would have suffered the consequences of that. That's why we have law and order. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a reporter for 25 years covering the justice system and the scale. So I, I don't actually look for this kumbaya moment where you, me, everybody says, okay, we all agree. What yeah. we're asking for in Breonna Taylor's case and any other case is that you, Ahmaud Arbery's mother, I interviewed her. She simply said, I want this to go to tr indictment charges and let a jury of our peers decide what they believe. And we know in many cases, the jury doesn't decide what we think is right, but let the justice system play out so I don't, I don't have this big fantasy that we're all going to sit at the dinner table and all see eye to eye on anything. But I do want us to be able to believe that justice will be served if someone's life is taken in the way that we watched with Trayvon, we heard, with Tamir, we saw, and the list goes on and on because police are there to protect us. And that's why we're having this complicated conversation now because we ignored the many, many, many examples. All right. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, Tamron <laughs> Hall. <laughs> yeah, I know. Honestly, I mean, um, Tamron Hall, thank you so much. Catch uh, Tamron show on Friday and every day. Check your local listings. Thank you, Candy. You and I will be speaking uh, a lot, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, for more, click around bravotv.com, everybody. Good night.